What is involved in a basic clean? We're going to talk a little bit about that today. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question and I get to help you find an answer. Now today's show is brought to us by housecleaning360.com. If you are going away for the holidays this holiday season and you're not able to take your pets with you, but you want to find somebody who's good, who can watch out over your pets, housecleaning360.com has the perfect person for you. If they service the home, housecleaning360.com has you covered. All right, now on to today's show, which is a question from Maria. Hi, Angela. This is Maria. I would like to know what the basic cleaning involves. Thank you. All right, now a basic clean is a little bit different for every single house that you go to because a house in Florida is going to have humidity issues where a house in Phoenix, Arizona, for example, is going to have dust issues. And if you're up in the mountains, you're going to have critter and bug issues because there are a lot of critters and bugs that live in the great outdoors. So it's going to depend on every single house. A house that is 6,000 square feet is going to have very different needs than a 2,200 square foot house. And so what you need to do is determine what services you want to do every single time. There are house cleaners who will include dishes and changing linens on every single clean. That is part of their regular standard routine cleaning. And then there are other house cleaners that charge extra for that service. So it really depends on what you're going to be able to do and the time that you have allotted to do each particular home. So my suggestion to you is to create a worksheet. And I have a worksheet you can download that is absolutely free of charge and you can tweak it and edit it to make it your own. And it has things like emptying the trash and vacuuming the floors and cleaning the baseboards and dusting the ceiling fans and things like that so that you know what you're going to be doing on each individual clean. Now, if your ceiling fans, for example, are reserved for a deep clean, then you don't want to include that on your worksheet. But whatever is on your worksheet, those are the things that you're going to do every time you come. And you will check those off as you go. Now, when you do an initial walkthrough with a customer, the customer may not need the things done that you have on your worksheet. So you simply draw a line through them and then you replace it with whatever they would have you do instead. And that way you are creating a custom sheet for that customer. Now, I don't recommend that you go home and you create a custom worksheet for that customer. I use the same worksheet every single time. Just cross through there and just write whatever it was they had you do instead. Now there are customers that will try to change things up every time you go. That's fine as long as they give you advance notice and as long as it fits in with your regular cleaning. So for example, let's say that they say skip this room, but do this room today. And it may be that you do a rotating series of rooms because their house is too large to fit into one cleaning. So it's really going to depend on how you set it up with the customer. Now, if it's going to be extra, let's say that it's something like cleaning out the oven or cleaning out the refrigerator, that is an extra upsell fee that you have to charge for, and it's going to take extra time. So instead of saying, don't clean this room, clean the refrigerator out instead, that's a separate charge. It's a separate project. You're going to have to take more time to put that on your, on your schedule so that you can fit that in during that allotted cleaning time. So the customer needs to know in advance what projects are not able to be swapped out on a regular cleaning. So what is involved? Regular basic stuff, cleaning out the toilets, cleaning out the bathtubs, cleaning out the, the bathroom sinks and the vanities cleaning out the kitchen and the kitchen sinks and wiping all of the countertops down. It's going to be sweeping and mopping the floors and emptying all of the trash in all of the rooms of the house. If there are flat surfaces, let's say in the bedrooms, it's cleaning all of those surfaces down. If there's dusting, it's going to be dusting everything down. There are just basic things that are done at every single cleaning. But like I said, every single house is different. And so it's going to come down to what are your skills and what are you offering? And this is one of the discrepancies in house cleaning. Everybody offers a little bit different services. And so when you come in and someone says, well, I paid my last house cleaner X amount of dollars. So what? So what? Because we don't know what the services are that they are offering. These are the services I am offering. And this is the price I am offering it at. And they can say, oh yes, that, that's an agreement. Or can we change one or two things? The day that you do the walkthrough, is the day they change one or two things. They don't get to change it at every time that you come to clean their house, unless you have set that up up front 
and said, we will rotate through your house and you can pick on a week to week basis what it is you want done. My recommendation is just don't do that because it's a lot of high maintenance. And then they're going to ask to throw in extra things that are not part of your regular cleaning. So what is involved? It's whatever you decide. So this is your business and you are the boss and you are the one that gets to decide. So have fun with this. And that's my two cents. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.